YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. So we are working on the homeless 2014 Lanai UTV 28 or Lanai Bighorn 400 UTV, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a no crank. We had to kind of bypass things to make the starter work and no spark. So we're going to work on those two things, make this look more like a real um, UTV, not just a hack job. So I tried to order the correct key switch for this thing. Um, I know I needed one that has the uh, extra position for start. It's kind of known as a five wire key switch. Unfortunately, the connector doesn't match. You see the connector right there on the end of the wire, that yellow thing. So we're going to have to hardwire this in. Um, no big deal uh, at all. There's only four wires here, so we had to figure out where they all go. So if you look at the color of the wires going to this connector, um, they're not coated properly. They didn't use the right color of the wires at all. And if you spend a few minutes poking around with your meter, you realize the following. When the switch is in the off position, the green and black wires are shorted together. Yellow, which is hot, white and red are not connected to anything. Those three are just floating. When you turn it to on, green and black become an open circuit, and the yellow wire hooks to the white. Let's see, I wrote white down there. So that's the on position. And lastly, when you hit start, once again, green and black are not connected, and the yellow wire is shorted to the white and the red. So instead of yellow being used for a starter wire, which I normally expect, they're using the red wire. White wire is um, normal on, and yellow is hot. So that's the way they wired this. As you're wiring this up, once again, <laughs> forget about the colors on the switch being proper. On the switch, yellow wire <clears throat> is plus 12 volts. The white wire turns the machine on. And the red wire, when you touch that, that's how you engage the starter. That's on the switch side. On the all-terrain vehicle side, red wire is hot, so you see it goes into yellow. Green is ground, no surprise there. The white wire is how you turn the machine on from the switch point of view. From the all-terrain vehicle point of view, that's the black wire with the red stripe. And lastly, the yellow wire comes over here to the starting solenoid. And on this guy, on the switch, it's red. So hopefully you guys could sort that all out. We're basically putting a generic switch into a specific all-terrain vehicle, which means we have to wire it. Once you wire it, when you turn it on, you can see the dash came to life right hopefully you guys could see that so that's that's good news um the next thing is you t turn it the next click we got nothing but i also don't have a neutral light here so let me mess with the stick with the shift and see if we can't get this neutral light to come on so if you mess with the shifter Right, you can kind of get the neutral light to flash on for a second. So, um, I'm not going to mess with that wiring for now, or it's probably an internal switch, so I'm not pulling that motor apart to figure that out. I'll show you guys how to bypass that. When you look at the starting solenoid, you got kind of the front end and you got the back end. Let's call the front end the... Um, circuitry that engages the coil here right so from a front end point of view 
you have the battery come in right goes through this fuse and it goes out on this red wire which eventually goes to that switch so we know that's working because the dashboard comes on right now you got these other two wires you got this yellow wire which I double checked <laughs> and it's the yellow wire that comes out there that goes into the switch and then you got this green wire right this green wire is the other side of the coil right yellow wire is the hot side of the coil the green wire is the ground side of the coil and you need both of these for this coil to actuate and when you put it in neutral, the yellow with the green wire goes to ground, you turn the key, and the yellow, yellow wire, goes hot, which engages the solenoid, which pulls the plunger up, which puts these two together, the battery and the starter wire, and your starter goes around. So, what I have is, I put this green wire right here, and I bolted it to ground, and we're going to poke it in there, then we're going to turn the key and see if we can't get the starting solenoid to fire up. So anyway, you guys could see I put the green wire in to bypass the neutral switch. And I put my um, meter into the uh, high side. So when I turn the switch to start, you see I get voltage on the high side. But you don't hear this clicking it appears as if this is dead so far we had no key switch we have no neutral switch and we have a dead solenoid these things are known for multiple problems I'm going to swap this solenoid out now okay I hooked up the new starting solenoid the new key switch I bypass the neutral switch, gauge the choke. I got my portable voltmeter right there. Let's see if I can one hand start this thing. She wants a little choke so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up the GoPro we'll start this thing up and uh, we'll see if we can't get a ride you can see the voltage is up there a little bit so the battery's charging I just um, unplugged and plugged to all the connections for the uh, for like the pulse generator and I checked the connections on the um, CDI box that's on the firewall and everything seemed to uh, come back to life, so I do not have an ignition by bypass. I, I'm running on the OEM ignition system. Some of these things are really fussy if your battery voltage gets down a little bit. So um, if somebody was trying to start this with a weak battery or um, something like that, uh, they, that, that could have been their problem. Anyway... Let me warm it up a little bit, and then uh, then we'll see if we can't get it out for a quick romp. Okay, it seemed to idle down a little bit. Maybe if I... Turning radio. 
it is. It's got a backup alarm. Check it out. Let's go high. to be charging. I gotta tell you, it's not very fast. getting over the COVID. I slept about 16 hours yesterday. I slept the night, a long night. And then I like took two, three hour naps. And then I fell asleep watching TV. Boy, this thing is wide. Yeah, this thing is up uh, well, through the mud. This thing is a boat. It is wide. Fit under that tree. Yeah, kind of. This thing is big. I have a uh, four gear hanging around, waiting to be turned into pepperoni. in front of the front door when my buddy who uh, hunts them is not around and then they like disappear like completely disappear when he is around so I'm always teasing him that they're messing with him sooner or later They'll be turned into pepperoni. It just might be later than sooner. I don't think I can even fit through there to get back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take the long way back. I gotta clean up around the property, you know? The place looks like a junkyard.
So what do I have tied up in this thing? I paid 400 for it. I drove an hour each way to get it. Then, uh, I bought a $15 ignition for it, though I didn't put it in because it doesn't need it. Or at least it doesn't seem to need it yet. What else did I do? The... The starting solenoid, I think that was expensive. I think that was like 25 bucks. The plug doesn't go into it, right? So I'm kind of sorry that I bought the real starting solenoid. For 25 bucks, I could have bought like three cheap starting solenoids. And, uh, and three separate fuse assemblies. You know, the mount fuse guys, or even the plug-ins. So that was, uh, that was kind of a waste of money, but I did try to put the right one in. I should get extra credit for that, right? Trying not to hack. <laughs> so anyway, and I still need to pop for a battery. Key switch was... I think somewhere around 15, so it's 54, and a battery. I'm gonna have 100 bucks into that. So I'm gonna have about 500 grand total into this machine. I should have won about 500 bucks. When we get out on the front lawn, I'll check to see if these switches here do anything. It is charging the battery, that's a good thing. It seems to be holding the temperature okay. I put gas in it. So that's lights, that's lights. what's with that motor. Well, that don't sound so good. <laughs> and it dies. So, I don't know, could you guys see these? The temp, that's temperature. It looks okay. That's gas. That's mileage, that's RPM, obviously it just died. That's an override. I think these are various lights. I don't know what this does. It doesn't do anything. So this has to be two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. It says it's in four-wheel drive. Oh, it just went into two-wheel drive. So, I don't know, could you see that? That's right here, two-wheel drive. Just did a four wheel drive. I guess it didn't. It's probably kind of stuck. Anyway, I don't know why this thing died. If I had to guess, it's got crap in the carburetor. Um, let's put it into neutral and see if she'll start. Well, it sounded like it was pinging a little bit. If I had a guess, it's not getting gas, and probably 
I, I took it out without rebuilding the carburetor. So that was probably a mistake. Anyway, um, it sucks that it's sitting here, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Give it one more try. As an intermittent spark <laughs> I fixed it and broke it all in one day <laughs> anyway I want to thank you guys for dropping by to watch and comment subscribe please remember feet down heads up get out and enjoy each and every day I gotta go get something to tow this back in with take care folks